Hey everyone, Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist and back pain specialist here, uh, as well as owner of PTNJ uh, here in Royersford, Pennsylvania. I wanted to create a quick video for you to share with you the three most common causes of lower back pain. So if you're watching this video, um, it's likely that you've had some type of x-ray or MRI that suggested maybe something is going on with you. Uh, maybe you've just done your own research and or uh, chatted with family, friends, or somebody else, and you have an idea of what you think is going on, but you're just not quite so sure. So I want to, uh, again, in this video, I want to lay out the number one, two, and three causes in a side-by-side -side comparison so you can start to get a better idea um, of what could be going on and or what could be the actual cause of your lower back pain, leg pain, numbness or tingling. So here we go, we're gonna dive right into it. Um, without a doubt, the number one cause of lower back pain uh, and or sciatica is a herniated disc. So a disc problem, all right? So I'm gonna draw a picture here that's sort of related to, to uh, problem number one and two. All right, so what you're looking at in this sort of picture here is you're looking uh, as if you'd be uh, from the side, looking from the side, uh, this back part here would be the little ridges that you feel on your back, uh, and these would be the bones, right? So let's just say that this is L4 and this is L5. Uh, we know that the most common level of a disc herniation is, is L4, L5. And in between here is the disc. So this is the disc, sort of the cushion between the bones or the vertebrae. Back behind the disc is the spinal cord, and then you have little nerves that end up coming together sort of in the area like the buttock uh, that run down the leg into the foot, all right? So the number one cause uh, of back pain is a herniated disc, and really what you're gonna see is that these folks are a little bit younger when their back pain starts, so they're less than 50 years old. Um, they ride what I call the roller coaster of back pain. So their back pain sort of comes and goes, meaning you know, they bend over, drive too long, whatever. Uh, their back goes out on them. Uh, they're in pain and discomfort for several days, maybe a month or even a few months, but then they feel pretty darn good and everything has sort of gone away until one day it goes out on them again and the cycle repeats itself over and over. <coughs> um, here, generally people with, with uh, disc problems don't like to bend, lift, uh, sit or drive for any amount of extended period of time. Um, when they do that, they might notice that, um, you know, they have trouble going from a sitting or a bent forward position to a standing position. So there's this idea of like uh, a struggle or a transitional problem where they just feel stuck and they have a really hard time straightening up if they've been, been over for a while. Um, back pain and or leg pain is often worse in the morning or the a.m. Uh, and the reason is, is because disc pressure is actually highest between about two and four in the morning. Uh, and you know, it kind of makes sense because throughout the day, you put pressure through your spine, uh, the disc pressure sort of reduces, but then as you lay down, right, think of a sponge, it's sort of when you release or step off of it, um, the water sort of reabsorbs into it. The same thing happens to the disc. So when you lay down at night, right, it just, the disc pressure increases again, right? And then when you go to sit on it, sit on up or roll out of bed or go to stand up first thing in the morning, you have a lot of stiffness. So um, what else we got here? So uh, sciatica, we'll have another video here coming up that talks about some self-tests you can do to determine if you actually have this. It's not all that common in actuality, but uh, the number one cause of sciatica is a uh, bulging or a herniated disc. And the reason is, is because if you have a disc bulge, that goes backwards, which is the most common direction for that, then you have the spinal cord and the nerves right behind uh, the disc. So sciatica, uh, as well as another telltale sign, would be a shift, meaning uh, if you've ever been over, picked something up, uh, or been sitting too long, you go to stand up, it's tough to stand up, and you might look in the mirror, and or someone, husband, wife, significant other, tells you, wow, you're really crooked, right? So um, that is, without a doubt, a very obvious sign of a disc herniation, all right? Um, now, what I want you to think of, right, uh, is I want you to think of sort of uh, what these types of movements have in common, right? So these people don't like to bend, sit, or drive, um, you know, or lift things, right? So think about the position of the spine in those scenarios, right? So here this person is, maybe this is you, 
you're driving, or if you flip that person this way, you're picking something up, right? So if you look at the lower back, right? Let's make it a little more obvious. Things are sort of rounded, right? So if you zoom in on that, this is kind of the position of the back. Remember, we have a disc in between here. There are disc material within this disc, right? About 80% water. And if you put too much pressure on the front of the disc, you'll actually increase the pressure. In a lot of cases, that's okay. But in people, uh, if you're at higher risk or if you're going to have a disc herniation or you actually do, uh, the disc material pushes towards the back of the spine, towards the back wall of the disc, which can weaken the disc. And then you have nerves, right? that go right behind and you can have not only pain, but also uh, pressure placed on the nerve, right? So I uh, think that this is just the movement that this person with a disc herniation generally does not like, all right? So that's the number one cause of a disc or of, a, of back pain, all right? <clears throat> so I'm gonna erase some of this. Now, the number two cause or the second most common cause of back pain and sciatica is going to be spinal stenosis which is literally just a fancy term that means narrowing of the spaces in the spine where the nerves travel. Um, you know, I would say, who knows Arthur? So what's Arthur's last name? Maybe you've met Arthur and you're well aware that his last name or her last name is Aritis, right? So arthritis, uh, degenerative disc disease or degenerative joint disease, all right? And what we see here is that these people are almost exactly the opposite in a textbook case of people who have disc problems. So what you'll see is that these people are generally um, more, I'll say, more mature. They're wiser, all right? They're a little bit older, so greater than 50 years old when their back starts to bother them. Uh, these people dislike standing. They'll say, hey, I hate to stand. I definitely don't like to walk. Uh, if they have true spinal stenosis that's pinching on the nerve, they'll say they have leg greater than back pain. Um, it might be one or both sided leg pain. Uh, and they say, you know what though? I love to sit because when I sit, all of my pain in my back and in my legs goes away. All right, and we'll talk about why that happens, uh, but this is a must. So if, you, if you've been told you have spinal stenosis or arthritis is the cause of your back or leg pain, but sitting is still painful for you, then you don't have spinal stenosis, all right? Um, what else we got here? Uh, 50, oh, and then something we call a positive shopping cart sign. So, uh, if you're watching this video uh, and you go to the, uh, you know, to the Giants or to the Wegmans or wherever, uh, and you yourself or, or maybe you see somebody doing it, you, they pitch forward on the shopping cart and that relieves their back pain, that's a, a strong indication that perhaps, not in all cases, that stenosis, arthritis, or some degenerative problem could be the actual cause of their back pain or leg pain, uh, numbness, tingling. So um, there you have it, all right? Now, with that being said, right, notice that these people, they don't like standing or walking, right? But they love sitting. <clears throat> the people with disc problems, right, they don't like sitting or bending or lifting or driving, right? But actually, and I didn't say this, they might actually feel better if they stand or if they walk, all right? So again, you can kind of see the opposites there, right? And then why would that be? So if we go back to this picture, right? What we know is that this person, the disc problem, here they are again, right? They don't like their spine being sort of in a rounded position generally, right? These folks over here, if you're sort of in this category, or your arm hanging by your side, right? Your spine is in a very upright or sort of arched or extended position, right? So unlike the opposite of somebody with a disc problem where they don't like being rounded, right? What happens here is that we know that even in healthy people, as you stand and you move around, the spine being in this upright position reduces the spaces where the nerves travel by about 30%. Um, and therefore, right, uh, if you have some form of arthritis or something in these uh, areas or these holes where the nerves exit or in the joints, right, what you get is you get more contact between those areas um, and it can cause you pain in the back and or leg pain, numbness, tingling, going down um, one or both legs, right? Now, when you lean forward, these people love sitting, right? When you lean forward, you can imagine that it actually opens up the space in the back of the spine, which relieves pressure on joints 
and nerves. So that's why people stenosis um, and or arthritis like the bent forward position, all right? And the third and, and uh, final uh, cause of lower back pain is a bit tricky. It rarely shows up on imaging, uh, which can make it sort of a little elusive, uh, is something we call an SI joint problem, right? Maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't, but just consider this, all right? Um, I have a daughter, she's a young girl, not even two years old. Uh, there are five bones in the lower back, one, two, three, four, five. Right, uh, just consider that uh, you know I'm going out to the beach with her, and uh, we're building a, a castle or a tower or something like that with blocks. Right, you know if I was to say to her, hey, make sure that you get this one really grounded well. You know which block would I want her to make sure was placed really well? And most people, and you probably agree, would say, well, you want the foundation to be planted really well, right? And there you go. So L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and this is the sacrum. Here would be like your little tailbone, all right? Uh, the sacrum is just a bunch of fused uh, bones at the base of the spine. Uh, and then what you have, sort of these wing-like things, these would be your hip bones, all right? And these, the fancy term, these are called ilium. And you can see here, sacroiliac, or SI joint. So the joint is basically the joining between uh, the hip bone uh, and the sacrum, right? And what we'll see with this is that this can be all over the board. It can be very young, middle-aged, and or older folks. So think of uh, the SI joint as a joint that has to sort of handle uh, stresses from the ground and then from above as we bend, lift, and twist. Um, you know, as you're very young and very flexible and the bones and ligaments aren't fully developed, uh, you can get some pain in this area. The other thing would be women, uh, uh, before, during, and after pregnancy, there's a hormone called relaxin that's secreted to relax the pelvis for childbirth. That can cause uh, some, I guess, excessive movement, or rather than saying that, some excessive stress through this area because there's ligaments here that hold this sucker together. Um, and or much older folks who have had some type of back operation where their back doesn't move as well as it used to. So what happens is if the back doesn't move very well, then the body's gonna be super smart and figure out how to move anyway. Imagine you swing a golf club, oh, my back doesn't move very well, but I'm gonna go somewhere else to try to get the movement, and what you'll see is that you might get some type of fracture in this area, all right? So what you'll see is, again, it can be across the board. Uh, it's generally one-sided pain. There's no back pain. So hear that again, these people, right, People with disc problems, they have pain that sort of spans across the lower back. There's a stiffness or a tightness across the, the uh, belt line. I should have added that there. Um, these people don't have any pain up here in the lower back, or if this was sort of the line of your belt. They have pain just below, sort of on, uh, it's pinpoint pain, sort of on one of those dimples, or that little bone on the one side of your lower back. Um, you might have uh, trouble or pain crossing your legs going from a sitting to standing position, um, as well as any type of like jumping or something like that that might stress out this joint. So um, there you have it, right? So those are the three most common causes of lower back pain side by side, so you can start to get an idea of what could be going on with your back and or your leg pain numbness or tingling.